exception coming from vegans or vegetarians, such as this very popular China study, is pervaded with vegan or vegetarian ideologically driven bias, pulling whatever it wants from 8,000 correlations, cherry picking references and omitting data. Um, so I would say, despite the concerning ethical shortcomings of the dairy industry, um, as I see it, the weight of the scientific evidence still is in support of milk as a nutrient rich beverage that can offer many health benefits to those who choose to consume it. Um, so the idea that there are three distinct body types or somatotypes, so the endomorph, mesomorph, and ectomorph, is based on some old eugenics riddled pseudoscience from the 1940s, where the goal is to associate each body type with personality, intelligence, future achievement, etc. And it later caught footing in the fitness industry and bodybuilding community. Now, the main issue that I have is that these body type classifications tend to imply that you can't change your body composition or even your body shape over time, which you clearly can. Uh, of course, you can't change your bone structure or the way your muscles insert, uh, but whether you currently look like an endo or an ecto, you will still lose body fat by putting yourself in a caloric deficit, and you'll still build muscle through progressive resistance exercise while eating sufficient protein and calories. And while the actual results may come more and less easily to different individuals based on genetic differences, differences in actual training protocols should be based on specific goals level of advancement and personal preference, not somatotypes. Um, so I really wouldn't recommend doing a detox diet. Uh, first, they can be dangerous, especially if they have you drinking way more water than you need or excessively restricting foods. Um, their entire basis comes from the faulty physiological assumption that the liver and kidneys need any help clearing out toxins, which they don't. And while they may lead to short-term rapid weight loss for some, due to the extreme caloric restriction. Uh, these diets are rarely, if ever, sustainable over the long term and often lead to weight regain. And given that there is a huge list of other weight loss diets with adequate protein and micronutrition, pretty much any weight loss diet you can pick at random will be better than even the best detox diet out there. Um, so not a big fan of those, although in my original video, I do discuss what an actual science-based detox diet might look like in the future, if you'd like to check that out. So the last myth actually turns out to probably be not as much of a myth as we once thought it was. Um, as it turns out, the bros were actually kind of onto something when it comes to the mind-muscle connection, as new data shows that you can see significantly more biceps hypertrophy when focusing on establishing a mind-muscle connection. However, this effect may be body part specific since it didn't seem to work as well for the quads in this study. Uh, granted, the subjects were untrained, so perhaps in more experienced bodybuilders who might be better at mindfully activating muscles of their lower body, uh, perhaps you'd see more growth in the quads as well. Um, still, this is a new area of research, so my personal recommendation is to not use a mind-muscle connection for all exercises, but rather just reserve it for isolation, single joint exercises that have rep counts higher than eight. And for everything else, for the most part, you wanna just focus on how your body is executing the movement as a whole, ensuring proper technique and lifting tempo. All right, so that's the final eight fitness myths covered, and that's gonna be a wrap for this season of Mythbust Monday. 优卡进场，一分钟一元，收费健身魂。